6.5, length of curves. Very well. So suppose you have a curve. It follows a function like y equals to f of x. It starts at a point like A and stops at another point like B. Your goal is to find the length of this curve. So the approach here is to slice the curve into very small line segments, find these small lengths, add them all together, and have the length of this curve. Very well. So to find the length of the, each of these line segments, we can use Pythagorean theorem, because this is the hypotenuse. So one leg is delta x, the other leg is delta y on y axis. So to make sure we have a positive value, we put it inside the absolute value. We know that if we have a right triangle, the hypotenuse R a B is equal to A squared plus B squared. So this length or this distance is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared. So we calculate each of these line segments, the length of each of these line segments, add them all together. Very well. Of course, we have a lot of these line segments and these are very small. These line segments are very small. So if you divide the interval into smaller, very smaller pieces, you're actually defined the Riemann sum while your k ranges between 1 to n. Then by taking the limit, you convert your sum into limit. But note that we define the derivative of the function as delta y over delta x. If I factor out delta x squared, I can define 1 plus delta y over delta x, which is defined as the derivative of the function, the rate of change of the function. As n approaches infinity, your Riemann sum is now integral, and the delta y over delta x is nothing but the derivative of the function. So the length of this curve is equal to the integral, the sum of square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared dx while x ranges between a to b. So we have this nice formula for you, arc length for a curve y equals to f of x. Suppose f for sure is a continuous first derivative uh, function on interval a and b, so it means that uh, if you take the derivative of the function, it is continuous on an interval. Then the length of the curve from the first point, a to f of a, to b, f of b, is equal to the integral of square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function raised to the second power, dx, while x ranges between a to b. Our very first example, suppose you have a function f of x, equals to square root of x cubed or x raised to 3 halves. So this is this function. We prefer to write it in the way that we can see the exponent. And x ranges between 0 to 4. This is the graph of the function. We want to find the length of this curve. Very well, we have a nice formula. The formula says, first of all, you have to take the integral 
of square root of one plus the derivative of the function squared. To take the derivative of this function, f prime of x is equal to three halves x raised to three halves minus one. So the derivative of your function is three over two times square root of x. This goes inside the integral, then you have to square it. So the integral of square root of one plus three over two squared, which is nine over four, and square root of x raised to the second power is just x. We can use u sub here for simplicity. You can take uh, this guy as your u, or you can factor out four over nine. So if u is equal to one plus nine over four x, then du is equal to nine over four dx. So your integral is equal to four over nine square root of u du. This is equal to four over nine times one over one plus a half what is your u? u is 1 plus 9 over 4x raised to 3 halves, or 1 plus 1 half. And your x ranges between 0 to 4. So we're using u sub. u is equal to 1 plus 9 over 4 times x. du is 9 over 4 dx. So dx is equal to 4 over 9 du. Since you have dx here, instead of dx, you write 4 over 9 du. Perfect. Very well. Now here you have four, then you have zero. So let us simplify this guy. Four over nine, one divided by three halves. So you get two thirds times one plus nine over four, x raised to three halves. And x ranges between zero to four. If you multiply these two, you get eight divided by 27. Let us plug in 4 here. We get 1 plus 9 divided by 4 times 4, 3 halves minus 1 plus 0, 3 halves, which is equal to 8 over 27. If you cancel out 4 and 4, you get 10. 10 raised to 3 halves minus 1 raised to 3 halves, which is 1. If you use your calculator, it's approximately 9. 9 units. This is the length of the curve. Another example for you. Here you have a function. 2 e to the x plus 1 over 8 e to minus x and you want to find the length of the curve on interval 0 to ln of 2. First of all, you have to take the derivative of the function because eventually you're going to use the derivative of the function inside the radical. Remember that the derivative of e to the x is the same as e to the x. And when you take the integral of e to the x, is also equal to e to the x. If you have e2 minus x, the derivative is minus e2 minus x. So we are taking the derivative of two times e to the x, which is two. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, you copy it down, minus one over eight, 
e2 minus x, the derivative of e2 minus x result in a negative sign in front of 1 over 8. Then, since you have to raise the derivative to 2, so it's easier to just raise this expression to the second power. Here we have this. 2 e to the x minus 1 over 8 e to minus x, raising it to 2. Very well. 2 e x raised to 2 minus 2 times 2 e to x, 1 over 8 e to minus x plus 1 over 8 e to minus x raised to 2. So this is equal to 4 e to 2x. So e to x times e to minus x, you write one base and add the exponents, x minus x, which gives you e to 0 or 1. So the product of this is 4 times 1 over 8 plus 1 over 64 e2 minus 2x. So you get 4 e to 2x minus a half plus 1 over 64 e2 minus 2x. This is f prime of x squared. So the length is equal to the integral 0 to ln of 2, square root of 1, don't forget your 1, plus the derivative raised to the second power. 1 minus a half gives you a half, and inside the radical, you get 4 e to 2x plus a half plus 1 over 64 e2 minus 2x. Okay, what do we have here? Take a look at this. Let me explain this part for you. You have 4 e to 2x plus a half plus 1 over 64 e2 minus 2x. This is expanded form. This guy is actually 2 e to the x plus 1 over 8 e2 minus x, the whole thing squared. So this is a perfect square. It's written in expanded form. Now we write it in compact form. Why is that? Because we want to get rid of this square root here. Square root and exponent 2, they cancel out each other. So you can copy down 2 e to the x plus 1 over 8 e to minus x outside the radical. Very well. Now you just take the integral of e to the x to e to the x and the integral of e2 minus x is minus e2 minus x. Since you have 1 over 8, you copy down 1 over 8 and you take the integral of e2 minus x, which is negative e2 minus x. Your x ranges between 0 to ln of 2. Let me write it down here for you. So first you plug in ln of 2. You get 2 e2 ln of 2 minus 1 over 8 e2 minus ln of 2. Minus, then you plug in 0 2 e to 0 minus 1 over 8 times 1 over e to 0. 
this is equal to E and LN, they cancel out each other. So you get two times two. Here, if you simplify this, you get one over E to LN of two. E and LN, they cancel out each other. You get one over eight times a half minus. E raised to zero is one, so you get two minus e raised to zero is one, one over eight. So we have four minus one over 16 minus two plus one over eight. You get two. So here you can write this as two divided by 16. You get one over 16. Okay, let me see what oh, this is two, 16. Then you take common denominator between these two, two times 16, 32, 32 plus one, 33 over 16. This is the length of your curve. Okay, let us move on. So if you define your function in terms of y, you need to take the derivative with respect to y and then find the integral with respect to y. For example, suppose you have function f of x equals to x to two thirds and you want to find the length of the curve between x equals to one and x equals to eight. So take a look at this. If you say, hey, I want to take the integral 0 to 8 of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared dx, let's see what, what's happening here. So f prime of x is equal to 2 thirds x to 2 thirds minus 1. So the derivative of the function is two thirds x to negative a third. L is equal to the integral zero to eight square root of one plus, you have to raise this to the second power. You get four thirds and x raised to two thirds dx. But how do you calculate this integral? When you have situations like this, we prefer to convert the function and write it in terms of y and then take the integral. So your function y is equals to x to two thirds. You raise both sides to three halves. three halves, so three and three, two and two, they cancel out each other. Your x is equal to y two, three halves. So the derivative of x is equal to three halves, y two, a half. Now you can take the integral. L is equal to the integral. So when x is equal to zero, your y is equal to zero. When x is equal to eight, when x is equal to eight, your y is equal to four. So here we have the integral, zero to four, square root of one, plus we took the derivative and we raise it to two. 9 over 4, and what square root of y raised to 2 is just y divided. Here you can use u sum, which is similar to what we did before, and find the integral. The length is like before 9.1 units.
let's see, what do we have next? Very well. Another function, finding the length. So suppose you have a function y equals the ln of x plus square root of x squared minus 1, and you want to find the length of this curve over 1 to square root of 2. Very well. You have to take the derivative first. Remember that if you have ln of u, the derivative is equal to u prime over u. So here you have to take the derivative of x plus square root of x squared minus 1 and divided by x plus square root of x squared minus 1. So if you want to use this method, this is the way that you have to handle it. So the derivative of numerator is going to be 1 plus 2x divided by 2 square root of x squared minus 1 divided by x plus square root of x squared minus 1. You can cancel out 2 and 2. On the numerator, you can take common denominator, which gives you square root of x squared minus 1 plus x divided by square root of x squared minus 1 times x plus square root of x squared minus 1. Then you have to raise this guy to the second power inside the radical. 1 plus the derivative squared. And as you can see, it takes a long time to deal with it. What else you can do? You can actually set this ln equals to y value and write your x in terms of y. So y is equal to ln of this expression. It means that e raised to y is equal to x plus square root of x squared minus 1. Now, you can subtract x from both sides and raise them to 2. You get e to 2y minus 2x ey plus x equals to x squared. Here you have x squared. x squared minus 1. Here you can cancel out x squared and x squared. Here you can factor out x, write it, I'm sorry, isolated x on one side. So here you get e to 2y plus 1 equals to 2x and you divide it by e to y. So your x is equal to e to 2y plus 1 divided by 2 times e y. Very well. Eventually, you can simplify this by dividing everything by e to y. So now you simplified your function, wrote x in terms of y. Very well. This is a function in y now. You can take the derivative, which is much more easier. The derivative of this function is equal to e to the y divided by 2 minus e to negative y divided by 2. The rest is algebra. Taking the integral of square root of 1 plus g prime squared, you raise the function, the derivative of the function, to the second power. Very well. Inside the integral, here you have square root of 1 plus e to 2y minus 2 plus e to minus e to 2y divided by 4.
take common denominator, which is 4, you get 4 minus 2 plus e2 2y plus e2 minus 2y. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. And you can factor out 1 over square root of 4, which is 1 over 2. You get square root of 2 plus e2 2y plus e2 minus 2y. So this is expanded form. You get a half square root of e2y minus e2 minus y squared. Now you can cancel out square root and exponent 2. I'm sorry, this is plus. So that's how you get e2y plus e2 negative y inside the integral. The integral of e2y is e2y. The integral of e2 negative y is minus e2 minus y. Your y ranges between 0 and ln of square root of 2 plus 1. You plug them in, simplify, and the outcome is equal to 1.